In this week's episode, we're heading into Prineville, Oregon with two goals to accomplish. One, to replace our old mattress. And two, to get a two-year inspection of our Sherp Tech truck bed. To do that, we decided to stay in town at Cook County RV Park in Prineville. Well, today is the day we are replacing our mattress. We have had our existing mattress for the last three years. We decided to try the RV mattresses from Brooklyn Bedding that you probably have heard from other YouTubers. Uh, they had a 25% off Labor Day sale, so we thought we'd do that. We have no affiliation, no nothing like that, but we wanted to try one of their mattresses out and, and see how it goes. But one thing we've noticed that we, we haven't seen online is the challenges with uh, getting the old bed out as well as getting rid of the old bed while you're full timing. So we wanted to give you the full picture of replacing mattresses while on the road. Also a good time to wash blankets and stuff, which we haven't done for a little while now. Okay, I think we got most of everything out of here. move stuff off of our wall that had a whole bunch of clothes and stuff and we're gonna see if we can get this out oh we probably should remove these too all right so do you want me to just try to flip that down here so i'm thinking we might want to thread one of these underneath it so pull it this way yeah. no just that far okay and then full good as a taco and we can do something outside. Yep. Yo taco bell. We're gonna go all the way outside with it. Okay. Not the easiest thing in the world about this. Well if we leave it as a taco fine. Yeah. That's the problem man. We were trying burrito style, but I think we end up with taco style. Maybe that'll work. We just have to make sure we can get it in the back seat of our truck. Carry it like you I barely only, I'm renting it. <laughs> and that's how you get. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> Goober. <laughs> well, that's apparently you can fit. Fred Flintstone. And it's good to know that if you have a Ram crew cab, you can fit a tacoed queen size mattress there you go. in there. And you These found are... out first here, because I just shoved Laura out the other door. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the winter, we ended up adding this foam underneath the Froley, because the air from the cap was making sleeping pretty cold. So this is our Froley system. It's really hard to see it, but it is just dusty a little bit. It's just dry as a bone. Yep, perfect. We were a little worried about whether that would, yeah, condensation would happen, but since we have the Froley on top of it, it kept the moisture above, which is awesome. This Froley system does help, but they are kind of a pain to keep in. It's in only on your side that the pain, by the way. I move around a lot. Oh, sorry about my socks. I move around a lot, and I think these come with me. In my side, nothing doesn't have any. Uh, so you're saying it's a personal problem? Yep. Mm. We're going to take it out of the box. I'm hoping that was a smart idea, but it is still wrapped. It does say team lift. We are now a team. Oh, really? Yeah. UPS was more than a winter ago. Yeah. Not a light package. All right, so we want to pull it this way. 
That thing is a chunky boy. Oh, it's folded in half. We do have it rotated. Um, we got to rotate at 90 degrees. All right, so now we got to flip it up and over. So do we just kind of try to flip it and like taco it and then untaco it the other way? Yeah. Okay. I'm exhausted. Yeah, that's because they got a machine that does this shit. It's worth being short at. So before we take the bag off, okay. let's move this Froley system in. Okay, our Froley system is having some challenges when we rolled this out. It's just cattywampus. Manhandling a mattress is just not easy. We're going to take this plastic off because that's going to create another bit of havoc. You might as well finagle it one time rather than two times. Okay, I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to see if you can pull that out. No, because you're not. Oh, shoot. Things are going to pull you and the rest. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So let's see where we're at so far. Okay. Okay, so the Froley system is a little jacked up here, but not, so oh, they're not horrible. So over here and get over here. Let me get, let me do my thing, because... I will let you do your thing. If you think making your bed in a truck camper is, is challenging, woo, doggy, is this hard. <laughs> I think this can be our, uh, our exercise for the week. Thank you. All right, next we gotta like fix we got all laundry. of this stuff. Yeah, lots of laundry. Um, and but obviously we're gonna let that out gas for a while. And yeah, actually, one of the things, it, there is a very faint smell, but it is nothing like other mattresses that I have, um, we've had. So this, that's a really good thing, especially in such a small area. We wanted to get a quick video of the washer and dryer area in this campground. It's quite nice. All of the machines are credit card operated. Of the six sets, only one of them is out, which if you've done this before, that's not too bad. $3 for wash and dry, so it is a little expensive, but the dryers are very clean. They have a little game section and some books. Uh, even places where you can, or even an area where you can purchase items. And then a pool table, fireplace, and some vending machines. And all this is at a county park, so. Yeah, that's kind of nuts. kind of nice. They are $50 a night, so, but you're getting full hookups too. Yeah, yeah, you're <laughs> getting the luxury of full hookups. Yeah. The five star treatment. We're getting so spoiled. Yeah, we're so spoiled. <laughs> I think next time we're just gonna have to do a dirt area. And we're going to have to wash all of our clothes by hand. No. Here we are at Kirk County Campground. We're here specifically for in Prineville. This is the home of Sherp Tech. And what we wanted to do is come in, talk with uh, Ryan and Rebecca, and find, just have them go over and fine tune the, the bed of the truck a little bit. We've had it for two years, and we just wanted to um, just make sure everything is cold and setting. For the most part, we've got a clean bill of health on the, bed, the truck bed. So one of the things that Sherp Tech did, we kind of jazzed up the seals in here, but they put in some new seals for us. One of the things that's really fun with this bed is, this is how it looks after two years. There's, I mean, yeah, we got some white marks from the camper, that's some aluminum oxide, oxidization on the camper, but it actually helps guide us into the camper. But you can see the bed, I've mean, got a little bit of a dimple, where there's a carriage bolt, but short of that, everything on this bed is, is held together really nicely. So this is what it looks like at the back of the bed after two years. Um, we've hit a lot of salt, we've done a lot of mud. Um, everything's in order. Um, you can kind of see where we're at. I, I got the other shackles in the back of the truck because we were doing some uh, winching out of people. So. Uh, 
here. All right, so I'll get in, I'll reverse it once I can feel it tension. Yeah, just let it go in. Um, these things here, sacrificial pieces when they're camper. Um, and we kind of chowdered them up, so we did pick up some new ones of those. And that's from landing the bed, you know, when you come down and you're kind of hitting off center. Usually when the camper's uh, up flat and maybe the pad that we're driving underneath, the truck is a little offset. So it's a little bit harder to land in there. So these guides kind of help. Yeah, I also wanted to point this out because this is, this is kind of a fun fact is this is the cleanest this truck has ever been. Uh, we took it to a car wash. We, we hosed out more mud than I thought was humanly possible from the underside of this vehicle. One of the other things that we had them look over was the air system. We had them check over that for any leaks and stuff um, and check over the system. We have a high amp charging system um, from the alternators to the batteries that we can use as well switched from inside the cab so we can turn it on turn it off. But we checked over all of the connections here. They went underneath and verified everything is tie strapped and everything is snugged up and stuff. So um, we don't have any issues. We're going to put all the stuff that from here and put it in the cabinets. And I'll put it by the cabinet that it's supposed to go into. And, uh, and that's you, not me, right? Oh, no, you're going to be helping me here too. You're going to have to put that camera down. Oh. I ain't doing this help up all by myself. So I've got everything from wrenches to sockets. I got gun cases with bolts, nuts, bolts, extra sockets. Here you go, I got air tools, spare parts, um, you know, PEX tubing. I can pretty much repair just about anything on the road. I got a vacuum in there. All my electrical wiring is in here except for this spool. But I, if I have a battery issue, I can fix it. So one of the things that Lori always complains about, she can never find a bag and understand what's in there. So on each of my bags, I put a tag and they're all color coded by what they do. So like this one is electrical. And so basically it's got all my ohm meters and all my leads and a few butt connectors, things like that. And then it corresponds with this bag, which is also my electrical, but these are all my tools. Got my wire strippers, all my all my electrical stuff, you know, anything that I would need for electrical. And that way I know where it is and I can go to it fairly quickly. And I also put it in this cabinet that's off the side of the road. So in this back box, basically I put all my air stuff. So I've got, and, and then I also have my ratchet straps and, and stuff like that, my uh, pressure washing stuff. So anything with a hose basically I put in this in this cabinet here. I also keep my bungee, my uh, toe strap bungee uh, in here. So again, if we get stuck somewhere, hopefully somebody else can help us out. But I keep all of that stuff in this cabinet. Air chucks, blow nozzles, all sorts of air fittings. Gary, the tool man. This thing is equipped to fix anything from a Hoover vacuum to the Hoover Dam. This side, on the back corner here, I keep a readily available fire extinguisher, fire starters, axes in there, my pruners, butane torch. I keep my heavy duty gloves. I've got all my RV sealants, some uh, clamp stuff for the bike rack, and then I keep my lubricants, tire chains. Oh. I haven't tried them. My collapsible shovel, which I've used several times. Get out of the mud. This one, we uh, keep a lot of the heavier stuff. Got all my spare parts for the camper, all of the digital stuff. I keep extra pumps. I use specifically for our water bladder. So if we run out of water, we can get water and 60 gallons, and then I can use this to pump it out. And then uh, this is what the old pump that came out of the camper, just cause I like to carry stuff. And then of course, if you don't think I can get the kitchen sink in there, I at least have the faucet. So why I'm carrying a faucet, I have no idea. Slide hammer. And then this is the jack, 20 ton jack. Um, uh, it's either go big or go home, it's air powered. So I can use the compressor from the truck to jack up the truck wherever I need to. So if I got to change a tire or do whatever, I can get underneath the truck really easily. I keep grease. These are all my electric tools. So I've got impact wrenches, drills, spare batteries for my drills, heavy duty jumper cables. So yeah, we got a lot of stuff that we try to jam into this. Um, and believe it or not, it all fits in. And one of the things that I failed to mention is up here on the back deck, I also keep a ladder and make sure everything stays there, so along with my spare tires. You want to tell us about all the stuff on the picnic table? Oh yeah, forgot about that. 
everything on this table fits in our flank sides underneath where the camper sits so here so it'll it'll fit in there and on that side over there so black tank stuff starling stuff this is all our dive gear fishing water bladder extra fans two ta two uh, portable tables this is a hose in case there's not a black tank hose these are for my auxiliary solar panels and then the cooler and got the stairs the gold treads and our chairs we have a lot of crap so we got a lot of stuff that fits into that truck all right let's see you get it in there all right well, here we go Any room in there too? So I'm going to bring you along tomorrow. We're going to put the camper on the truck tomorrow. So when we do that, we'll show you how this all fits in. All right, it's time. We are going to add all of the stuff that was on the side. thing is, uh, it's nice to have for peace of mind in case the refrigerator goes out, but it is a pain in the butt. They haul it around too, so catch 22. So all these chairs are comfortable. They're kind of a pain to fold and unfold, and they take up a ton of room. If you have any suggestions on chairs that you'd like, let us know, because these, I would love to hear it. This side is done. I gotta find a place for this. All right, we're doing our walk around, and then we're headed up shortly. We're heading to the local transfer station in hopes that we can get rid of this bed behind us. Uh, wish us luck. As a bonus, we'll get weed. Um, $12, which is awesome. Thanks for stopping by, and we hope to see you next week as we explore some fantastic BLM sites around here before heading to get some much-needed maintenance done on our camper. See you on the next trail.